Well, the Federal Attorney General, the Federal Attorney General, Christian Port, is throwing his weight and the government, Morrison government's weight, behind support for an urgent application to stop the Maritime Union of Australia, the MUA, stop industrial action at four major Australian ports. Stevedoring giant Patrick's have lodged an application with the Fair Work Commission claiming Australia's economy is losing hundreds of millions of dollars a day as a result of stoppages, go slows and overtime bans at Sydney's Port Botany. The Prime Minister agrees that the union action hits below the belt. They says that they offered to help get medicine off the ships but were rebuffed by Patrick's. What more could they have done and why should they give up the right to take lawful industrial action when politicians are still getting their pay rises? Well, they're not. No, they're not. Not in federal or state governments anywhere? Not in federal governments, no. So, we're, we're not. Shouldn't they be able to take lawful industrial action, though? Why we're do in the you middle of the COVID recession and there's supplies on ships that need to come ashore. It's extortion, and I won't put up with it. The Australian's workplace editor, Ewan Hannan, joins me now from Melbourne. Thank you for your time, Ewan. Run us through this action, a little bit of background, and, and also what's at stake. Uh, at the moment, Peter, there's been uh, action that's been running for a few weeks. Uh, Paddy Crumlin says there's only been one four-hour stoppage, but in fact there's been a number of overtime bans uh, and other bans which have been leading to a big blockage of um, containers. Patrick says today there's at least 100,000 um, containers which have been backlogged, including medical supplies, they say. There are strikes planned which have been notified for the coming days. And that's driven Patrick to go to the Fair Work Commission to say, we want this action stopped. They've been uh, backed officially by Christian Porter, the Industrial Relations Minister. They will argue that this is doing economic damage to, sorry, damage to the economy. And that is one of the grounds they can use to get the action stopped. Uh, at the moment, there's a standoff, really. The union says, oh, we haven't done this action. They, the company is using COVID. But one of the interesting things is, yes, normally these things happening or a bar big bargaining dispute. In Australia, we haven't had that many strikes lately, and particularly it's highlighted when, during COVID times, that um, something like this can have such a potentially significant economic impact. And, and we're told that there is on the table a push from the MUA for members to have a 6% pay increase. Uh, confirm that for me. And also, you know, mm -hmm. the average uh, wages of these workers are well over $100,000. I'm interested, was there any sort of history going into this dispute? Uh, are they using COVID as a way to, you know, force Patrick's hand, let's say? And what's the likely time frame on, on how this will be managed through the Fair Work Commission? OK, so the average salary of these uh, wharfies is somewhere around $150,000 to $170,000 a year, potentially higher, but that includes all overtime, when you wrap in all overtime payments. The 6% pay claim, annual pay claim, was on the table initially, but that's been withdrawn. So realistically, the union, the employers, both put in amber claims at the start of a bargaining um, decision. The union put in a 6% annual claim. The company put in a claim for big changes to rostering and other arrangements which the union didn't like. So now they've confined those arrangements and brought them down. The union's saying, I oh, will accept about a 2.5% pay rise a year, which is still you know, around a bit high but um, in terms of what people have been getting, but pretty on average for what MUA members get. So both sides, I think, are probably exaggerating where we're at and the importance of this fair work hearing will be both sides will have to test the evidence, um, test their own, have their evidence tested. They will have to put down the hard data and show this is the economic impact. That's where Christian Porter will come in behind them and say this is the, economic, uh, this is the impact that's occurring on the economy and then mm -hmm. the Fair Work Commission will decide. All right, you and Hannah and I will leave it there, but we will all be reading your columns and uh, your coverage of this with interest. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. All right, let's cross now to Paul Damker, the CEO of International Forwarders and Custom Brokers Association of Australia at the front line in this dispute. Paul, you're currently receiving, I'm told, letters from many distressed importers. They've essentially got stock on these ships in containers that was going to be their saviour come Christmas time, out in the retail market to get out of the COVID hole. They're really concerned, aren't they, that it's all slipping away from them? Exactly, Peter, and thank you for your time. It's, I've, I've had a, a, a whole host of uh, heartfelt letters 
from small to medium-sized enterprises, and this was their last chance to make any sort of sense out of uh, 2020. And now it's sort of evaporating with uh, the, the possibility of cancelled orders and one small to medium-sized business who's just really starting to get on his feet is probably in the vicinity of 750000 to a $1 million loss. That's impending uh, ca cancellation of orders because of the, the, the delays for the Christmas uh, rush. Mm. How angry are people and, and businesses in particular that you're talking to that this is happening all in, in and around a COVID recession at this time and why this action at this time? Well, Peter, it's, you know, anyone who's on, you know, in the mid from a 155,000 to up to 200 with overtime and still expects a 2.5% increase is got to be a little bit crazy in my eyes. And as far as I'm concerned, I heard the Prime Minister and a lot of politicians saying we're in this together. And that's the case. I think a lot of people are. And it's just typical, as far as I'm concerned. The PM was pretty strong today. He called it extortion. And uh, he has obviously got Christian Porter, the Federal Attorney General and Workplace Relations Minister, involved in this action. What do you want to see happen next week? Well, I have been talking to the Attorney General, Christian Porter, uh, on Friday. I've been to, to the Prime Minister's office and his uh, local electorate. And we've been pushing this uh, point very hard in the last two weeks because I don't think the public understands what this will, will do to the to the normal Christmas time and everything you want from you know from medicines to food, you know, everything from them down to even you can't even buy a fishing rod for for a Christmas present. And that's that's the truth. Yeah, absolutely true. I know we got, you know in Victoria we're locked up. There are no shops and I'm living online and I tell you what, there's a lot of stuff that's out of stock because it's sitting on ships waiting to get into Australia. Paul Damker, good luck with the negotiations. We'll be watching it closely here and following it and let's hope we can get that stock on the shelves. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Peter.